Hey YouTube friends, Ben Ochart here, how are you? And today I want to talk with you about fish food and uh, why I, I use certain kinds of fish food and what kind of fish food I would avoid and not recommend and uh, one of the important aspects of color and activity and interaction with your fish is what you're feeding them. Let's go ahead and get into that in today's video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to uh, hit that hit that bell and that sub. And uh, if you like if you like the content, hit that thumbs up as well. And it's very appreciated when you do that tells me you like what I'm doing and uh, just gives me some good feedback. There's a few things I look for uh, in food and uh, some of you have asked what do you feed your fish and uh, I feed my fish a variety uh, of, uh, of, of food and for a variety of reasons but um, one of the things I use of course and I have been using for a long time is is these products from from Northfin. These are Northfin products and in this case I have uh, just your cichlid formula in a three millimeter pellet. Uh, this would be for like a, a mid-size to uh, below mid-size fish. And then I have some, uh, and then for a smaller fish, like maybe the ones in the in the in my uh, 60 gallon, I might give them a two millimeter pellet. And uh, what, I, what I look for is, especially with cichlids, is I want food that's going to sink and uh, uh, not, it doesn't have to sink immediately, but certainly sink because that way fish at all levels can get a shot at it. Like in my 100 uh, gallon, the uh, the white lips will seldom come to the top of the tank. He prefers to eat uh, you know near the bottom. So if uh, if the fish is if the food is staying near the top, uh, it's going to get all wiped out. And also if you have anything like a cynodonis, let's say, uh, or any kind of a bottom feeder, they're not going to have a chance in a, in a cichlid tank. Uh, unless you have food that can sink. Uh, these pellets usually will sink very quickly, especially if you drop them uh, hard into the into the tank. They'll, they'll go straight down and every fish at every level will get a chance. I also feed at both sides of the tank. I have two openings and I feed at both sides very, very quickly. That way the dominant fish can get a hold of the food uh, they always eat first. They always keep the smaller fish away. But the smaller fish can go to the other side, and and then when everyone goes over to that side, I already have I already have another pinch of food going, in the first in the first place. So um, what I look for in foods is I look for ingredients that are very very nutritious, and are something the fish might encounter in nature, and and I want those ingredients to be at the top of the list. So um, if you look at something like, like uh, Northfin, you're, you're going to see, um, and again, remember, the percentage of the ingredient is going to be uh, reflected in how high that ingredient is in, in, in the ingredient list. So, so the first item would be the item that is the greatest percentage. Uh, let's say you're buying cereal for one of your kids. Don't buy cereal with sugar as the first ingredient. <laughs> unless you love your dentist. So um, let's see here, ingredients. Whole Antarctic krill, high omega-3 DHA, herring meal, whole sardine meal, and then we get into wheat flour, organic kelp, spirulina, garlic. So there's a few things in here that like wheat flour, like you can ask, what the heck is wheat flour in there? Well, if wheat flour is that far down in the ingredients, we have here one, two, three, four. You know, it's five or less. It's five or more down the list. I'm not going to worry too much about it. It's there. It's there as a binding agent, so that the pellet will stay together in shipment, so they don't just disintegrate. So I don't worry too much about that. Sometimes you'll see soy uh, flour uh, products like that, uh, but those first five ingredients are very, very strong in Northfin, and this is why. You know, you, you see this kind of a, this kind of color, this kind of uh, vibrant health in the fish. And um, another product I've been using recently is this uh, cobalt. 
ultra pe pellet uh, predator uh, food with uh, it has uh, probiotics, prebiotics, and probiotics. Not sure how that would work if you were medicating your tank, let's say, with an antibiotic. You would probably be offsetting the, the effects of a pre and probiotic. Might not even be recommended that you use this if you're treating your tank with some kind of an antibiotic. But this one uh, floats. So this is going to be for your top feeders. And they have another, another brand here, which uh, is the sinking one, slow sinking. So you have prawns, dried spirulina algae, good stuff, dried kelp, dried seaweed. Okay, we're good. But then number, this is one, two, three, well, number five, so I guess we're okay. You have whole corn. Now, I don't, I don't know how much corn, uh, you know, kernels are going to be floating around Lake Malawi. Uh, I suspect the corn is in here as a binding agent. And then it gets into jumbo squid meal, whole anchovies, whole sardine, whole scad, whole garlic, whole three-spot swimming crab, then you get into soybean meal and brewer's yeast, more binding agents, I think. So on this one, they're using uh, the corn. I, b I believe probably they help it. Maybe they help it float. But uh, whereas the other one, the one that is sinking is uh, prawns, jumbo squid meal, dried spirulina algae, whole anchovy, whole sardine, whole scad, Jenga shrimp, whole garlic, dried kelp, dry seaweed, Soybean meal. So these are some pretty good ingredients. I mean, so I would say if you're going to buy between these two cobalt products, I would I would recommend get the slow get the slow sinking. It seems like it has a better mix of products, a better quality mix. Interestingly enough, uh, Omega, the Omega flakes, are actually a pretty good product as well. You can find Omega products usually at your at your big box stores, you know, and most fish uh, fish stores will have them. And this one, you're looking at, um, they say feed three times a day. Uh, I don't do that. I, I usually feed one time a day. And, uh, and, and sometimes I'll skip a day. And, uh, but it has whole salmon, whole herring, black cod, halibut whole shrimp, and then wheat flour. So we got down one, two, three, four, five. Sixth ingredient is wheat flour. Again, a binding agent, so the flakes stay together. So this is not a bad product, all, all things considered. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if it has, has a lot of vitamin supplements, not sure if it has any dyes or heavy preservatives, but it's got omega-6 and 3. So this is a mass-produced but pretty high quality product based on the ingredient list. So I look at the ingredients and uh, I also include vegetables uh, to help clean out the digestive tract of the uh, of the cichlids because they do have a tendency to uh, get get clogged up and that that's what you call the Malawi bloat. I uh, thank goodness have not had that problem but I'll introduce some spirulina 20 into their diet and a lot of these products I pick up from uh, from Super Cichlids, Super Cichlids in Dover, Delaware, and uh, they offer good prices and free shipping usually. But uh, spirulina 20 is 20% spirulina, also some blue-green algae, salmon fish meal. Now in this case soy flour, the binding agent, is uh, number three and wheat flour is number four. Brewers dried yeast and cornstarch. So you are getting into binding agents and fillers more than I would like to see, but they do claim that that the percentage of of the good stuff is very, very high. And that may be offsetting the fact that some of those products that I don't like so much are appearing a little bit higher in the ingredient list. At any rate, my fish love this stuff. It does introduce some greens into their into their uh, into their system. I also use a mysis, uh, actually Ener energetics. I use the energetics product products with good results. I have also used the uh, the Syrah from Germany, Syrah pellets, cichlid pellets, 
and I've noticed good results on that. The things I look for are ingredients. I also look at the um, the veracity, the 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 uh, appetite the fish demonstrate when I when I drop the food in. Do they go after it? Do they uh, hold it and and continue eating, or do they spit it out? And um, and I also use omega one uh, cichlid cubes. They contain garlic and a lot of good ingredients, and the fish love that. And I've, I've had it work for me with, with finicky fish. And I also use uh, frozen krill. The beauty of something like a frozen krill is that you know that all you're getting is krill. There's nothing else in there, just frozen krill and maybe a little bit of water. So um, so my advice is be, be conscious of the ingredients and uh, watch your fish, how they react to it. Uh, certainly keep a log, and let me tell you what I mean by that. If you're um, introducing a new type of fish food, make a note somewhere. In my case, I keep a, a running log on my phone in the notes section of my telephone, and um, of my cell phone, and and that log I'll, I'll put in there, uh, you know, July, you know, July 12th, 2000, uh, you know, 2020, started feeding Sarah, and um, you know, I notice all of a sudden that the fish are looking amazing. I can go back in my log and go, oh, look at that. The fish are looking more vibrant than ever. They're very active. They're healthy. Um, you know, they, they, their color is just blowing up. Uh, what changed? What changed? Did I, did I start, did I change my water change schedule? Did, uh, I, oh, look, I started feeding them Sarah. So um, keep a log. That'll help you to determine, uh, to determine whether or not the food is working or not. Okay, so uh, those are my tips and the three foods I'm, I'm using probably the most right now are frozen krill uh, as a once a week treat, the, uh, the uh, probiotic uh, food from Cobalt and also the uh, Northfin, the Northfin products with some Sarah mixed in there and a little bit of energetics mixed in and that is my food combination. I do mix things up. I put them all into a big jar. I have an old jar, New Life Spectrum, which I stopped using because it was clouding up the water. I've heard that they've cleared that up, uh, no pun intended, but I've heard that they've done that, uh, that they've done something to the formula. But this is an old jar of, uh, of that. And in it, I have a combination. It's running low right now, but there's, there's Sarah and there's like two millimeter uh, North Fin in there and some, maybe even some uh, the uh, energetics. And so, uh, so I, I give them a, a combination. The reason I do that is I don't think any one food company uh, has has it nailed entirely. They're all doing the best they can. They have their own laboratory, their own um, access to ingredients, and uh, you know negotiating their deals with wherever they get their ingredients from. So um, I think some some companies uh, some some companies will do uh, you know they'll do the best they can. But they're not they don't necessarily have it all covered so i'll use a combination a combination of foods so that uh, my fish get some variety you know in nature they're they're pecking a little bit they're grazing over here then they you know they're swimming a few hundred yards and they're grazing over there and they're uh, you know picking off a few fry here and there and you know they have, they have a whole mix of stuff so you know we can i think we should provide them with a little bit of uh, a variety as well so um those are my tips on feeding, I hope you find them helpful. If you have any advice or tips on feeding, uh, note them below. I'd like to hear them. We're always learning from each other on this channel. And um, I hope to see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And um, if you're looking for a, a, a nice coffee mug, uh, stop by the uh, the Teespring store. You can help the channel by, uh, by picking up one of my uh, limited edition uh, coffee mugs. If you need something from Amazon, use my Amazon store link because that'll give this, the, uh, the channel some credit as well. I appreciate you stopping by and uh, take a quick look here at the fish. As you can see, that big uh, movement of fish from the 100 brought over here to the 150 is working out okay. Everybody seems to be getting along. So fingers crossed, as any cichlid keeper knows, keep your fingers crossed because uh, you never know what's going, <laughs> what's going to happen. All right, my friends, I think that's it for me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.